Okay, this is George with Cherry Creek Refrigeration. Talking to you about R290 refrigerant. Okay, so right here is my recovery unit. What we're going to do is we're going to pull gas uh, vacuum on this. Um, we're going to blow nitrogen through first, pull a vacuum, blow nitrogen through it a second time pull a vacuum, a real deep vacuum, and then we're going to uh, put the refrigerant in that. Okay, there's a few steps you need to follow. Um, first step, before you do anything, get your gas leak detector. Turn it on. You leave it on while the job is performed, while it's running. Second step, after that is to post your sign that says no smoking you know propane is in use um, third step is to identify the system find out where it has leaked from or what the problem is this particular unit was leaking and so you're gonna see in here you got your red stems that they have to be put back on after you uh, do the system after you finish the system so that somebody can identify it second step is we're gonna put a piercing valve on the unit but we're not gonna cut any of these fittings off until we figure out where it's leaking from third step is to determine where it was leaking from and you can see right there right there see and so I went through the rest of the system to make sure that there was no other leaks I checked the inside evaporator I checked the condensing units. I found them in the condensing units. Usually this third elbow down here. Uh, I found them in the dryers before. I um, also found it on the other factory pinch off up on top. But you can really see. And that's on the suction line. So you should replace the compressor. The filter dryer always gets replaced when you open the system. Um, I'm going to have more videos, I'm going to put part one, part two, how many ever parts it takes, but I'm sure you don't want to watch the whole entire thing. So hopefully you can find some more of my videos online. This is how to do R290 refrigeration. Okay, this is part two of the video on R290. Okay, so. You can see I got the other compressor out. Um, you cut the lines. You make sure you cut them. Um, see they're all cut off. The dryer's cut off. Down at this end it's cut off. They've really made the copper uh, too short. You know, look at that. They cut that. And I cut that as close as I could. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about electrical. Um, with the R290, there should be no electric. It's free. So with these little clips right here, these little clips right here, you get something nice and small, like my Allen wrench, and you push the old fittings out. Then they got these little barbs on them. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see them. But you got to open these barbs up a little bit. And then you're going to push them back into place. Um, that way you got no open electrical fitting. There's special wire nuts that need to go with them. I don't have one up here with me because I don't need it. Because I was able to push the fittings out. But they have little clamps and you clip them over and you clip them back. You can't use the standard wire nut where you wire it together. So that's the electrical portion of this. I will post another one. See you soon. 
Hi, this is part three on R290 refrigeration. Um, okay, so now our next step is, before we weld anything, we're gonna wanna make sure that we clear um, these lines of any residual R290 refrigeration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow with our nitrogen through the system. So I'll do the condenser first. Nudge it. There's oil coming out. See it? I'm going to want to make sure we clear that condenser completely out of all that oil that's in there. See, we still got oil coming out. And then we're gonna repeat the process to the inside of the unit too. Until the lines are free and clear of all oil and all R290. All right, part four, R290 refrigeration. Okay, so now <clears throat> we're gonna put some temporary fittings on here. One here and one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to release one side of the hose, the high side, or the low side, I mean. And we're going to run nitrogen through there as we finish our welds on the unit. And then, after we finish with the welds, um, we're going to pressure test with nitrogen, check to make sure that there's no leaks anywhere. And then, once we do that, we'll pull a vacuum. So I'll see you guys in a little bit after I finish welding and pull a vacuum. Okay, so now we've done the nitrogen test. We've let it sit for a while. It's about even. Um, we put the shorter hoses on now. And we've removed the straighter pins because we're going to pinch those off. Um, we've also put the clamps on for the test oil. There's one right there, just coming out of the condensing unit. And then, I don't know if you can see this next one in there. Just right there, just before it goes into the compressor. So we're gonna pull a vacuum now. We're gonna use a micron gauge and we're gonna get down at least into the 500s and then we'll charge it. Okay, so now on the vacuum, what we're going to do is we're going to pull a good vacuum on this unit. We're going to at least want 500 microns. And you can see, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let's see if I can light that up for you. I'm not sure if you can see that. Maybe the sun's got it. See if I can turn it around here. So we're at 300 microns. So that's well beyond what the factory asked for. They asked for 500. So now we got our vacuum pulled. Um, next step is to charge it. See you in a minute. Okay, so now our next step is to weigh in the charge. I've noticed if you leave it in the box, it makes it a little easier. And then you put some wrenches on top of your hoses or something heavy so that the holes can't move. And then you come to your meter and zero it out. And so this takes 2.8 ounces. So now we're putting 2.8 ounces in. And... Then we're going to pinch it off and weld it shut. Alright, so it's about 95 degrees out here today. Um, I charge in 2.8 pounds, but unfortunately, field piece, the screen blanked out just before I was getting ready to show you guys. Um, not a fan of field piece, not at all. Um, 
Okay, so I probably imagine that nobody in the internet has shown anybody um, operating pressures. So, let's see if we can see this. There's your operating pressures. Let me turn my camera view around if it's possible. Okay, so R290, operating pressures. It's about 95 degrees out here. You guys got to remember that. I'm outside in the sun. There's your temperatures on your lines. And so there's your subcooling. 6.9 or 6.8. There's your superheat. Um, there's your pre low side pressure. Your high side pressure. Now remember we're outside so it's like 95 degrees. It'd probably be just a little bit lower than that. Uh, but otherwise than that, there's your operating pressures for R290. So now my last step now is to pinch these off. And how I'm going to test to make sure that there's nothing there is I'm going to pinch them off. Um, then I'm going to release what's in my hoses. And make sure that it doesn't... Um, it doesn't leak back out so you know that's the part I don't really like I'd rather just leave those Schrager pins on there but the manufacturer doesn't want it done like that um, yeah so my field piece blanked out just before you guys could really see it it was 2.8 ounces uh, I've never really been a big fan of field piece everything I have sort of a field piece just doesn't really work correctly you know, it weighed in the charge great though. I mean, at 2.8 ounces, see, I'm set for R290 up here. Let's see, so let's see what the evaporator temperature is. Look at the evaporator temperature minus 8.7. Man, that looks really good. Hey guys, have a good day. That's George with Cherry Creek Refrigeration. I'll show you the pinch off and it all put back together. Thanks. Okay, so the very last step. Um, we're going to grab our meter over here. And we're going to check where we pinched off these welds. See? That weld is no longer there, see? There's my two pinch offs. nothing okay now check this next one and that one's good too so but you gotta remember to put these sleeves back on these red sleeves these red sleeves are really important see I gotta put this other one back on that suction side um, okay so a short recap um, any electrical components to go with this stuff, no open components. Uh, you make sure your fan motors are sealed. You make sure your um, capacitors, your caps, um, no regular wire nuts on this stuff. Um, when you recover it, you're going to recover it into a cylinder. You can let it go, but uh, I don't think that's very safe, you know. My object is never to hear this meter ring. And it stays on the whole time while you're doing this process. Yeah, I never want to hear that meter ring. Um, your sign, you need a sign. Um, you need to be in a well-ventilated well area. See, today um, I brought the unit outside. Lots of fresh air out here, but still my meter never rang. Uh, it rang once when I took my hoses off the unit. Um, see so what else can we recap? Deep vacuum, you need a deep vacuum on the thing. Um, when you weigh in your charge, you need to have an accurate weigh. Um, now you guys at least seen from the video before this one, 
what the pressures are supposed to be. There's never really been anything with the video out with pressures on it. Uh, nobody showed anything like that yet. Um, but so I would say, you know, better safe than sorry. You know, make sure you blow through the system a bunch of times. Get all that nitrogen out of there. Remember, with that nitrogen, get that propane out of that system. Um, the propane can hide itself inside of oils. So it's important to really blow through the system. Deep vacuum. And then it's really important that you take um, these fittings off. And you put these red sleeves back on so that somebody that comes up to service it in the future can know what's in there. Or at least say, hey, what's that red sleeve for? Okay, hey, thanks. Hopefully uh, this will help you guys in any future uh, R290 stuff. It's really not that difficult. Hey, have a good day.